you have the option of creating multiple forms within a mass family. So you could actually draft individual classrooms, corridor, assembly room, working from the inside out uh, to create your building. You're really drafting uh, activities in place and you've got the option of doing this in your model either as an in-place mass inside a project or in a mass family where you're drafting the individual activities. Still in conceptual design what I'm thinking here is that I want to create a mass form and uh, this time what I'm going to do is instead of assembling different activities like administration um, an assembly hall or a gymnasium in several classrooms and corridors. I'm just going to draw them. So if I start here, I can say, let's begin with a rectangle. Um, I want this to be the administration block, which I'd drawn previously. So what I can do is draw the rectangle. And let's just set the dimensions as being 60 by 60. Oops, sorry, I, uh, I can delete that dimension. I must have clicked on turned it into a permanent dimension by mistake. So double click on that, that's 60. Double click on that, that's 60. Pick the form, create form, solid form, change the height to 12. Um, I've got a gymnasium or assembly hall or something in front of it here. What I'm going to do is draw the ship. Always make sure that you refer up here where you're drafting and make sure I've got this switched off. Click and uh, click, and I was able to align that here. If I double click on here, I'm going to set that dimension to being the 60. I'm going to do my uh, extrusion of the shape, the create form, and I'm going to set the height to 24. And classroom coming in in front of this, I'm going to, which is 30 by 30. I'm going to make sure I'm drawing on level one. and 30, select it, create form, make it 12. Fine. I could actually just select that, uh, that form and say that I want to make a, done, get the form, the whole thing. And here I'm going to copy it. So I'm going to copy it from that corner to this corner. And again, the technique, I'm tabbing until I get the actual form, not a surface or not an edge. And then I'm going down to say, why don't you copy from, say, that corner to this corner. Um, I'm then going to come and draft the circulation down here. It was, in, it was nine feet, uh, nine feet wide, 12 feet high. So if I, if I draw it like this, you see I can align with the surfaces. I'm going to pick on the edge <clears throat> to change that to the nine feet width that I want for the corridor. Let's grab that. Let's say create me a solid form. And another technique here would be I could say something like uh, align to the top of here, the top of that. So there's my there's my school, uh, but drawn as individual forms. Now the, the the reason you might want to do it this way is kind of the additional flexibility associated with drafting it. You're kind of thinking as you go. For example, if I tab in to the uh, the classroom here and I said edit the profile, I might well make some changes here. So. Um, I'm not using the kind of cookie cutter approach to reproduce different forms by assembling them as part of a building block, but I've actually got a lot of control over what I'm drafting. So if I wanted to, for example, in this classroom, I could change the, the form of the classroom here. And then the last thing I'm going to do here is, is just make sure that the profiles are actually locked so that the bottom shape and the top are the same. So, you know, really, really that gives me a lot more flexibility and I draft whatever I want it to be. But when I model this as an energy model, 
each of these forms will be considered as being a different zone. 